distribution coefficients can simplify complicated equilibria. And I'll try to illustrate that in this particular example. Imagine you were looking at silver sulfide, which is a solid, and in aqueous solution it will dissolve to some extent to form two silver ions and sulfide anions. Well, right away we know that in an aqueous system there's hydrogen ion that could possibly protonate sulfide and depending upon the pH it might form even a diprotonated species. So these equilibria have equilibrium constants associated with them and so there's Ka1 and Ka2 that describe how those things interact. If this solution contains ammonia, then there's the possibility of forming ammonia complexes and there's stable ammonia 1-1 one, one complex and there's a K1 that governs that and there's a 2-1 to one complex, a K2 that governs the formation of that. And these are equilibria. So there's a lot going on in this solution. Let's see how we can deal with that very neatly. There's a KSP that we know tells us about this solubility. So silver ions go into solution. So the product of silver ions to the second power times this sulfide ion should be a constant. We can look up in the literature and find that this is about 8 times 10 to the minus 51. It's a very small number, which indicates this is very low solubility. We don't have a direct handle on the equilibrium concentrations of that. We might want to know just exactly what, how much dissolves. So let's define x as the solubility. in moles of this silver sulfide units uh, in moles per liter that dissolve. So what we do would like to do is to replace the silver ions with something that we are interested in like solubility and other terms that we either control or that we can find equilibrium constants for. So silver is related to all these different species that we find in solution. The one we're interested in though is just a fraction of the total diff of the different forms. That's the alpha value which is the fraction that we want is the free silver form. How does the analytical concentration for all the different species compare to the solubility x. Well we see that every time a mole of the formula unit dissolves we get two silver ions. So the analytical concentration of silver in all the different forms is equal to 2x. Therefore silver ion is equal to alpha for silver in the free form times 2x. In a similar manner, the sulfide is related to the total scorecard on sulfide is all the, the sum of all the different forms. The one we're interested in is just a fraction of all the different forms. And it's the sulfide in the dianion form that we're interested in. Well, how does the total scorecard for the sulfide family relate to the X? Well, Every time one unit of this dissolves, I get one sulfide and it gets redistributed, but the total is still X. So the sulfide can be expressed as just alpha for the sulfide times X. So we can rewrite our KSP expression and we see for silver squared we have alpha for silver 
times 2x, that quantity, squared, times sulfide, which is just alpha for sulfide, times x. Or expanding this, we have 4 alpha for silver squared times alpha for sulfide x cubed. Or that x is going to be the cube root of Ksp divided by 4 alpha for silver squared alpha for sulfide Let's set the initial conditions at 0.1 molar ammonium buffer at pH 10. So that means that the hydrogen ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10. Now, we also have to take into fact that ammonium ion and ammonia are linked as family members of a weak acid base family and so there's a Ka associated with this. The Ka for ammonia is 5.69 times 10 to the minus 10. So we're going to be needing the ammonia concentration, and we know, though, it's not 0.1 molar. It's just alpha for that particular species times the total scorecard on ammonia. So we need to calculate the alpha value. Alpha, in this case, is fairly simple. It's just Ka over H plus plus Ka for ammonia. Alpha for ammonia is equal to 0 0.85. So ammonia concentration that will show up in our other work is 0 0.085 molar. Now we can calculate the alpha value for the silver in the free ion form. It's going to have as a denominator 1 plus K1 times the ammonia concentration plus K1 K2 times the ammonia concentration squared. And the numerator is the first term because it's the first member of the family, the one that has no ligands attached. The K values we can find in the literature. K1 for the silver ammonia complex is equal to 2.34 times 10 to the third. K2 is also a favorable number, 6.92 times 10 to the third. Plugging these values in along with 0.085 for the molarity of ammonia, we find that the silver, the fraction in the free silver form is 8.53 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. The sulfide fraction is going to be H plus squared plus Ka1 times H plus plus Ka1, Ka2 for our denominator. And the numerator is the last term in the denominator because this is the last family member. And 
looking those equilibrium constants up, we find that Ka1 is equal to 9.63 times 10 to the minus 8, and Ka2 is 1.33 times 10 to the minus 13. Plugging these values in, along with hydrogen ion concentration, which is 10 to the minus 10th, we find that alpha for the sulfide is equal to 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3. Now we're ready to plug these values into the to our equation for x. So we're going to divide our KSP 8 times 10 to the minus 51 by 4 times alpha for silver, 8.53 times 10 to the minus 6 squared. And also in the denominator is alpha for sulfide, 1.33, 10 to the minus 3, and we take the cube root of that. Numerically, we get 2.75 times 10 to the minus 13. It's not a very big number, but it's about a factor of 10,000 larger than it would have been without the presence of ammonia or the hydrogen ion interaction with the sulfide.